Hey, when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know, probably never. What I do know is that I'm still Angie, this is still 4F Beauty, and hopefully you're watching me in black and white right now. You will have seen from the thumbnail, the title, and if you've read any of it, the description. Don't worry, I rarely read the description until after the film anyway. This is episode 50 blinking 3 of my photo inspiration challenge collaboration. Well, or pick for short. And I'm delighted that returning for her fourth time in this challenge is the beautiful, the wonderful, the effervescent 24 hour clock buddy. It's Kaylee. So, if you want to find out which picture the beautiful Kaylee chose for us as our inspiration for our looks today, which colours I chose for this look, and of course, what this looks like in glorious Technicolor, then my friend, Sammy the Sloth, confirms you have the best seat in the house. So it's time to grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up and enjoy. Because here it comes. Hey my lovelies, welcome back, how you doing? Right, you will have seen from the intro that this is another pick episode. Which episode number is it? I have got it written down because I knew it was a... I'd forget. Episode 53 and uh, fourth time with a Kaylee, my 24 hour clock buddy. And she chose this picture. If you've not watched my pick before, basically we both have a picture as inspiration. We both use the same picture. The two rules are you can only use colours that are in the picture. So obviously there's no um, there's no obvious bright red in there. You know, like scarlet pillar box fire engine red so I can't use that colour but you don't have to use all the colours which is quite useful seeing as how there's like bright yellow, acid green, mid greens, deep greens, various shades of pink going right the way through to a very deep um, in the shadows there almost like a wine burgundy same with the purples, starting off with the lilacs up on the, the mountain behind and then as you come down getting very very deep purples and then all the different shades of blues and teal. Now I've got an app on my phone which is a Pantone picker which particularly when there's a picture like this with so many colours on I'll use the app just to see which colours it pulls out for me. And that's the load of colours that I have to choose from. So, uh, using, as Lawrence Cheney would say, a redacted cosmetics. I'm sadly using redacted cosmetics. That thing has a name. Um, I am basically going to do a makeup look based on that picture. And Kaylee is going to do a makeup look based on that picture. 
So far in this series, there's only been two occasions when the eye looks have been similar. But even then they were different enough that you could see there were two different eye looks. So, the reason I started this series is because I was fascinated how different people were attracted to different things in terms of when they're making their when when they're choosing a makeup look. It started from when people were getting um, palettes through, and you'd see all these different tutorials. They're all slightly different because everyone was drawn to different colours in the same palette. So I thought. If you've got really colourful photos, or pictures, or paintings, or sketches, or whatever, how different could the looks be? What colours are you drawn to? Because when I was first looking at this, I thought I'll probably do a, a greeny, yellowy, bluey look. Now, today, I'm kind of more drawn to the sort of the pinky, lilac-y kind of bluey shades. So it really does depend how you feel on the day and what colours you get drawn to. So enough waffling. This is still a teaching channel so I will still be coming in close up when I'm applying the makeup so that you can see exactly what's going on even if you watch me on a phone and you've not got great eyesight. Uh, this does of course mean that when I'm looking down to clean a brush or add more pigment you get a lovely shot of my widow's peak. You're welcome. Um, <laughs> I do it for a number of reasons. Um, mainly because it's easier for you to see but also because uh, if I have to cut a section out where I've had to stop because of pain it's much easier to do that without making it so obvious when it's just my eyes on screen. Um, before I start applying the colours however I am going to insert a clip which again is just my eyes on screen so it's very up close where I talk you through the differences between hooded and deep set eyes they are different. The application method for applying your makeup to get the best initial look and the best longevity from it are actually different. But the number of people I see that say, oh, I've got deep set, I've got hooded eyes, and I look at it and think, mm, no, you have deep set eyes. So I'll insert that clip just here. And then once that clip is done, I will see you at the other end of it using colours that I've pulled out of, because I depotted all of my redacted cosmetics palettes and created my, my favourite shades from it into a palette, which just happened to have pretty much all the colours that I wanted to use today. Isn't that lucky? So yes, um... I won't be telling you which palette it's from or what it's called, I'll just be telling you which colour I'm going into because the whole point of this is not for you to have to use the same palettes that I do, it's for you to look through your collection and use your palettes so you don't have to keep going out buying new palettes all the time because who can afford that nowadays? Hmm? Alright, here's your clip, I'll see you at the other end of it. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Chrome Pebble Primer in Blank Page Cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%. And I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. 
so unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot for example you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this, you can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest, the deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well, so you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush, just a very light layer, and then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes. So I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes, I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So, I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much, if not more, lid that tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get. So. What are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush. Sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow. So just use smaller blending brushes, or if necessary, take the colour right up to the brow, instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using. Just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids but that have very similar issues. Hey my lovelies, I am back. Okay, I'm using a Voldemorphy M321 brush because I want control about where it goes. Basically it's a compact blending brush. It's a little bit fluffy because it's just been washed. But it's a little bit like your hair, you can't do a thing with it when you just wash them. So, I think I'm going to start off by picking up some of that pale blue from the water. And I think some of the lilac from the, the background initially. So I'm going to go start off into a, a nice pale blue. Now as always, let me just I think I've still got a little bit of um, soap in the brush. 
Right, as always, I'm going to be using the Viennese Waltz method of blending and I hold the brush at the very end. If your handle is long enough, brace the end of it against the palm of your hand because it will stabilise this end. Now, most people you will see using a windscreen wiper blend like this, which is all very well, but when you're a couple of weeks away from being 47, which I am, I'm still 46 at the moment though, um, and you've lost over 200 pounds, the skin on your eyelids moves. But I know slim teenagers that have got the same problem. So by doing a Viennese waltz, which is natural turns towards the nose, a flecker when we get there, and then reverse turns to come back out again, what we're doing is we're very gently manipulating the eye and gently moving the skin so that we don't get that telltale white stripe where the eye has folded over on itself. So, I'm going to start off with this lovely light blue, which actually kind of matches my kitchen walls right now. In fact, it's the exact colour of the blind at the window in my kitchen. Not that you can see that. And I'm going to start sort of halfway between my natural crease and my brow, right in the middle there. And I'm going to bring that across towards my nose, a little bit of a fleckle, and then come back again. Now, I would rather tap off like I did and build this colour up than have too much go on at once. So I'm just going to spend a little bit of time building that colour up a little bit. How's your day been? Has it been a good one? I hope it has. If it hasn't, well then I sincerely hope that tomorrow is better for you. And if you're at the start of your day, darling, I hope it's as fabulous as you are. Um, I'm getting a little bit of fallout, but I'm not overly fussed about that. Because... Uh, I do my face afterwards anyway. Now with this eye, um, you will see me treat it slightly differently. This is the eye that I'm blind in. So this got pulled around an awful lot when I was a kid. And I'm talking five, six years old. So I've got very, very deep creasing just here. You can see I've not got the same depth of creasing that side. And even with my circular movement, I can still get those telltale stripes. Um, unfortunately, when I'm putting colour onto the inner part here of the mobile lid, I have to break my own rule about never stretching the lid out. Because otherwise what happens is the pigment builds up loosely in those deep creases. And then because I always apply pigment wet to minimise fallout of shimmers etc. Um, as it dries through the day it ends up crumbling into my eye and down my face which is painful and unsightly. So I'm just going to clean this brush off using a clean washcloth. I used to use colour switches but they're far too harsh on the bristles of your brushes so if you are still using colour switches folks please stop and just use an old washcloth or an old towel or your pyjama leg which I've been known to use before now when I've not got a clean washcloth near me I know I know shocking right now I'm gonna go into a nice pale lilac to pick up on the colour of the mountain and behind the mountain in the foreground and I'm just gonna start applying this and just 
Actually, I think I might start the blend here. Sometimes it works out better if you actually blend the two colours together first rather than build this up and then blend. You can see it's given me a really lovely different shade of lilac there. I do struggle sometimes, um, particularly with this eye, but on both eyes, here and here, where I get very, very dry patches. Um, I'm actually trying out, I don't know if you've seen my haul video that I put up, um, but <clears throat> Robert Welsh recommended the e.l.f. primer oil and he's got oily combo skin, same as me. I've always avoided oils in the past, oil primers that is. Um, but he was saying that this one worked particularly well for him. Um, and if you don't use too much of it, it, um, it doesn't make you go too shiny. So I'm trying that today to see how that feels. But obviously I'm going to use it underneath a more matte um, foundation. I'm going to use my MAC Studio Fix because I've missed not having that. I ran out a while ago and didn't worry about getting any more because I've got so many foundations. Well, I've still got so many foundations. But I found myself really missing MAC. So I know you pay more for it. But sometimes it's worth it. If you're going to splurge anywhere, folks, splurge on your base because how you prepare your canvas determines how well the rest of your makeup will last. So, you know, you could be using Colourpop shades here or you could be using revolution shades here rather than an indie brand or a high end but so long as you've got a good base underneath it and I'm not saying that drugstores don't have good bases um, there's a couple of drugstore bases that I really like um, a couple of the W7 bases I like um, the Colourpop Pretty Fresh is quite nice too, although it doesn't last that long. Right, having cleaned that off, do I want to go for a slightly finer brush? Yeah, I think I will. This is the brush I've been using, which you can see is quite rounded. I'm going to use this one, which comes slightly more to a point, to do this next bit. Let's see if I can just snooze the motion part of my doorbell for a minute. Right. So I'm going to go into... I think I'm going to go into one of the deeper purples which make up some of the colour of the, the, the sort of the mountain and the overhanging crop in the foreground. Um, so I go into a nice deep purple. Right now this is the point where if you've moved your crease this is where you now follow your new crease line. I'm just going to start initially at the edge and just start buffing some of this deeper colour just on the edge to really soften and just blend it into this lilac. And then 
pull that along. The rest of the crease line. Because anything dark goes back. And anything light comes forward. So by making the darkest part of your look the crease, if you have had to move your crease, this will give the illusion that that particular part of the eye folds back further. So will help to reinforce the illusion that you do actually have a crease line. Hopefully you can see the difference of what I'm saying there. Whereas to me this all looks the same level but here because of that depth you can really see that it goes back and then comes back out again for the front of the lid. I hope that's showing up okay. I'm just going to add a little bit of this onto the outer third of my mobile lid and as always I do my little flick like this because uh, the birch pollen has started I've got a silver birch in my garden and boy do I know, the birch pollen has started, but I have runny eyes anyway. I had runny eyes before I had fibro. And one of the side effects of fibro is watery eyes. So there are times that I just cannot do liner. But by doing this, and then I'll tidy it up a little bit later with some micellar water, just to sharpen that line up. This has... A twofold effect. One, it gives you the effect of a winged liner for pulling up the outer edge of your eye there. And also, if you're new to winged liner, you're not sure where to put it. If you do this with your light, with your um, eyeshadow, you can then follow it with your liner, and you know you're going to have the right line, the right shape, the right angle. See? Tricks and tips. Get it all on this channel. <laughs> Some people ask why um, I don't just do one eye completely and then go off and do the other eye. Well, there's a reason for that. With fibro, and even without, if you get hay fever or you've got particularly sensitive eyes. I can have days when one eyelid is slightly puffier than normal. So I'll apply my colour as I normally do. Because obviously I've been doing it long enough now that I know roughly where I need to apply colours to have them look symmetrical. But there are times when, if one of my lids is a little bit swollen because of fibro, or hay fever, or whatever, it'll look slightly lopsided. So I'll have to adjust the placement, rather than having it an exact mirror of the other eye have to have it slightly different applications either shape or how high up the eye it comes or how far out the eye it goes to get it to look symmetrical and the thing is if you've put all of your other colours on and blended them all and everything you're going to look at it and you're going to go something's not even but I can't work out where Whereas if you do each colour at a time, you can sit back, just relax your brows, check your eyes, which if you notice, I've been doing all the way through, to make sure 
they look exactly the same. It also means if you don't have very many brushes and you're cleaning them off in between and using the same brush again, you're not going to have the issue that, oh, I've now used a really dark colour on this, but now I want to go into a lighter colour. Or what if it's still got a little bit of pigment left on it, you know? You can see what I mean here about how I get dry patches here and here because this one is looking a little patchy just there so when that is the case what I do is I make sure it's all blended out all the edges are blended how I want it then I'll pick up a little bit more pigment on the brush and just pat and tap to build the colour up without blending it. Okay. Shimbrush. To quote it, make out on the advert. Shimbrush. I do like that one. Have you noticed they've stopped giving out the little it used to be a case of take out your insurance and get a make out. Now it's like take out your insurance and you get three for two at the or one two for one at the cinema or whatever. I'm like, yeah, but I want a meerkat. Right. I'm gonna show you how I tidy up the edges. A lot of people ask me why I don't use tape. And the reason for that is because if the tape is sticky enough that it's going to stop powder from going underneath it, then it's sticky enough that it's going to pull your skin when you take it back off again. So I've got a pad here with my cellar water on. And I'm just going to gently wipe up the outside and then take any excess off. Just like that. And then do the same this side. Just to straighten up that edge. Now, as I was saying, I always wet a shimmer before I put it on. However, never ever go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush because you will end up killing the pigment eventually trust me on this one because I've done it I've done it many times in the past because um, I've seen bigger beauty gurus do it because they don't care because you know they'll they'll be moving on to the next palette that they get sent for free so they really don't care if they bugger their palettes up because nine times out of ten they haven't bought them anyway I don't know harsh but true harsh but true so I'm going to pick up on I think the deeper teal that you see for the lid for this so I'm going to which of those two do I want to use that's a very good question so actually you don't actually see much difference on screen but this one is slightly more green and this one is slightly more blue. So I think, I think I'll go for the one that's slightly more green. Right, and I'm going to go in with a, a flat packer brush or concealer brush. And what I'm going to do I'm going to get pigment on the brush 
and then I'm just going to use an old setting spray to wet the brush. Now your ferrule here is now wet so if you tuck that into your knuckle and spin to dry it off because the last thing you want is moisture getting down here and loosening the glue that holds on to those bristles for that brush otherwise you're going to end up with a very expensive not very useful stick. Uh, you can use any moisture or any water or liquid to wet the shimmer. Um, you know you can use a moisturising spray like MAC or Mary at the desk you can use priming spray, setting spray like I did, finishing spray, you can even save an empty bottle, wash it out and put fresh water in it each day. Just don't ever go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush. So you can see that's applied really nicely with minimal fallout. Now I'm going to use the tip of the bristles just to smudge the edge and blend it in with the shadow we've got at the very outer edge there. That is pretty. Dry the brush off, <clears throat> go in and wet it, no, go in and apply the pigment. Wet it. Right, I'm going to show you how I. I'm just drying the ferrule off at the moment. I'm going to show you how I apply colour to this lid, breaking my own rule about not pulling the lid out, but doing it in such a way that it causes as little additional damage as possible. So. I only pull out the lid far enough to straighten out the creasing. I don't put it right out to my ear. And then I, as quickly as I can, apply the shimmer to the creased area. And then gently put it back. I don't just let go so it spit it pings. And then the rest of the lid I do in exactly the same way that I did the other lid. But you can see there's an awful lot more movement on this lid than there was on my right eye or left eye as you're looking at it. And that's because of the damage caused when I was five years old. So, if that doesn't show you, because that damage didn't occur, didn't appear, as in I wasn't seeing it until I was about 41, 42, and that's when I started to notice I got deeper creasing that side. So it took the best part of 30 odd years, but the damage was done. And that's when I had really young, flexible skin. So please, please don't pull your skin on your lids around, my darlings. Right, I am now going to go and pop some foundation and whatnot on. Um, it's going to be a while now before I can have another chat with you. But for you, darlings, it's going to be completely instant. So I'll see you right now. Okay, I am back. As you can see, I've gone for my usual uh, super brown, and I used the deep shade here to just colour them in. Yay me! Right now, uh, I'm thinking actually of pulling in maybe some of the brighter pink of those flowers and the bright yellow 
where the sunlight hits the the uh, or shall I do green? Hmm. I think I might do green because obviously this teal is picking up on the blue here. But then if I do a green under here, so if I pick up a green, this is a, just a flat topped brush. If I pick up a reasonably deep green, this is actually a shimmer. But I'll be careful with it. Just to pick up the shading of the grass. Just run that underneath my lower lash line. I'll tell you more about Kaylee towards the end of the film. I like to keep the tutorial part just tutorial. I don't want you missing what I'm saying about Kaylee because you're concentrating on techniques or whatever. Especially if you're the sort that speeds me up because you can go quicker, which doesn't worry me at all. Right, regular viewers will recognise this next brush. It's from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette. It's flat topped and a chunky, a bit like me. Um, so it's great for getting under your lower lash line to, to buff shades out, but any chunky brush will do. And I'm going to go into a really super bright yellow, which I've just tapped off a little bit, to uh, pick up on the sunlight on the grass. I'm just going to use that to gently buff that green out slightly lovely this is a way if you're not used to using colour you can always start off by popping a bit of colour on your inner corner or just popping a bit of colour onto your lower lash line it's a great way to start experimenting and seeing colour on your face. Hmm. I like that. Right now this, this is a brush that I've had for donkey's years. And I mean donkey's years, I think this is about probably about 10 years old. And I'm going to go into my JD Glow Synopsis Highlighter, which has got like a bluey greeny shift. Hopefully you can see that there. Look. That shows that shift off really nicely. And I'm going to pop a little bit of that. This is just a lip brush, by the way. Pop a little bit of that just up under the tail of my brow there. Wow. It's the first time I've used this highlighter since I showed you it in the haul. Oh, 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 I can see why everyone raves about them now. Cannot wait to put that on my face. I'm going to be dazzling the gods. They are not going to be able to see what I'm up to at all. I like to bring mine round the inner corner and just down under the lower lash line just to blend it into the colours running underneath there because I think where I don't tend to put anything on my waterline because my eyes are so watery um, I just think it finishes my eye shape off nicely right lovely ones I've got my fluffy brush ready to apply highlighter to my face so, I am going to pause you for one last time. I'm going to chuck some mascara on, some highlight, lippy, do something with the hair, which is just not playing ball today. 
and I'll be back with my finished look and to tell you a little bit more about the lovely Coley. So don't go anywhere. I am back. Hello. Hi. <clears throat> the lippy is my Colt Candy Cosmetics Playhouse lippy in BB, which I've not worn for a little while, so I thought I'd give that a bit of a a bit of an outing today because she hasn't been worn for a little while, so seemed only fair. And this is my finished look inspired by this particular painting or picture or photo or whatever. What do you think? You like? You not like? If you were making a look based on this, which colours would you be drawn to? Would you go for the same ones as me? Would you be going down the cooler route today? Or would you be heading more down the warmer route of the pinks and the purples? And... It's weird how purple can be both cool and warm depending on what you uh, pair it with, isn't it really? And it's undertone, of course. Anyway, Kaylee is the lady who is collabing with me today. Um, we've collabed on this four times now and we've got other collabs that we've done. <clears throat> Big group collabs and single collabs. We both duped the um, Moete palette from Melt and did a look with that. So we've, we've, um, we're good friends. And uh, one of the things we always joke about, Kaylee's ex-military, um, she had to leave the service because of a back injury. So of course she's used to the 24 hour clock. Myself having worked for the Royal British Legion, which is dealing with the military, and I was working for the department that organised battlefield tours and pilgrimages worldwide, if you're talking flight times or itinerary times, you always use 24 hour clock so that there's no mistake in terms of morning or evening. So for me I still automatically use 24 hour clock <clears throat> and the number of people that can't seem to grasp that, they, they have a, a real sort of mental block with it, I don't know why. Um, even like super super intelligent people just cannot seem to get past that block and um, Kaylee and myself just laugh and joke as well like oh so that'll be I'll be going live at noon and she's like yes yeah, so that'll be me going live at uh, 0600 then I'm like yes yeah, so that sounds right and it's you know it's just it's so much easier because we we both automatically use 24 hour clock and it's, we, we call ourselves 24 hour clock buddies because so few of our friends actually use 24 hour clock. Um, she is an absolutely wonderful person. If you've not seen her before, you really are missing a trick. She is so kind and so sweet. Uh, and she's got some amazing dogs as well. Huge dogs. <laughs> but amazing um, and she does she does a lot of project panning and she does a lot of duping palettes as well which I, I really appreciated it got me into to doing that last year I duped a couple of different palettes initially because I really wanted a palette and by the time I saved up enough money to buy it it was discontinued which was the Muerte palette by Melt um, and there's no way I'm going to pay the prices that some people are asking for, for a damn palette. Um, I might love my makeup, but come on now, it's just a palette. But um, yeah, it sort of ended up, I was inspired because I saw Kaylee had, had duped the palette. And it inspired me to actually sort out all of my individual shadows. And actually work out what I'd got, actually group them by colour rather than just oh, these are all my colour pops, these are all my revolution, these are all my ABH that you know 
I actually did them by colour and then I realised I actually had enough to dupe the Moirte palette which I ended up doing and I've used it quite a few times now off camera and I'm just I'm so pleased that she inspired me to do that and you know she's I keep trying to do project pan the problem is I've been trying to do empties for ages and I keep forgetting to save my bloody empties I just use them and it's like I finished up this sleigh all day in creamsicle I'm like, I must hold on to that because I know I've got a couple of mascaras over here that I'm due to finish up because they're getting to the end they're, they're getting a bit dry now and they've been out in a couple of months and they're little mini sample sizes anyway I'm like I really must save them and it's, you can bet your life I'll come through and go why haven't I put that in the bin and just so I'd, I'd love to try project pan but the problem is I I think I'd get bored using the same thing over and over again. The only things that that I do use consistently every time I do my makeup really is my butter bronzer, which I've got a nice bit of pan on. Look at that, Kaylee. Are you proud of me? Um and my soap brow. That's really the only two things. With that and my whichever flavoured flavour, whichever scent Gerard spray I'm using, I'm currently using the rose one, which was uh, done in collaboration with Nikita Joy or Nikia Joy, Nikia Joy, not Nikita Joy. It's someone completely different. Um, the Australian uh, beauty guru. She uh, came up with this one. And it's, it's rose scented, but it's not old lady rose scented. It smells like Turkish Delight, which is lovely, but it is making me crave Turkish Delight, which is taking me completely off track again. And this is what happens when you have fibro. And potentially on the Asperger's spectrum, because I've had two or three people say to me now that they think I might be. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah I'll worry until this... Well, once we've once everyone stopped panicking about COVID and we get back to normal, where well, we can actually go and see our DP rather than just talk to them over the phone, um, I'll ask about getting tested for that. But yeah, apparently that is one of the symptoms you mind going off on tangents and then coming back again. But yes, um, so what was I saying? Kaylee, Project Pan. That's what I was saying. See what I mean? Brain gone absolutely mad. But um, I absolutely adore the woman and I'm sure you will too if you haven't already seen her channel. So her film and her channel are both linked in the description box. Now, before you shoot off over there, what I need you to do, if you're a regular viewer of mine, a member of the 4F family, please double check you're still subscribed. YouTube are unsubscribing people. But they are leaving my films in your news feed so it's not obvious you've been deleted. It's also worth double checking your notification status because I keep getting knocked back to personalised and when that happens I don't get any notifications at all. They have to be set to all for me to get anything. Um, so not just for me but for all of the channels that you follow it's absolutely worth double checking both of those things when you next watch one of their films just check that you're still subscribed and you've still got your notifications set um, once you've done that please do let me know which colours you would have been drawn to from that picture um, which palettes would you have used to create your look and if you do decide to recreate your look please do tag me in the results on either Insta or Twitter um, or if you don't have either of those, um, inbox me because I think you can. I think you can set up an account without actually having to post anything on Insta. So you can just have like a blank page, but you can then message people. So because I would really love to see how that particular picture inspired you. 
once you have done all of that and maybe given me a cheeky little like while you're at it because it does help with the algorithm I'm going to need you to go over to Kaylee's channel, my 24 hour clock buddy and check out her film. Now I sent through a load of pictures for her to choose from she's responsible for choosing this particular picture so I, while you've been watching me, I've been watching her to see exactly which colours inspired her and which palettes or singles she decided to use whether it's any of her project pan bits that she's doing can't wait to see because like me she does she's not scared of color she's really happy to just dive straight in and just really have fun with it because let's face it that's what makeup should be it should be fun you know just experiment chuck some colors on you've never tried before if once you've got it on you don't like it What my cellar water's for. You can take it off, start again. <laughs> but yeah, go over and check her film out, please. Do all the good YouTubery things, give her a like, a comment, follow her if you're not already, because I promise you, you won't regret it. And just basically show her the same kind of love you always show me. Because, let's face it, the 4F family is the nicest family on YouTube. Let's spread the love. If, however, you are here from Kaylee's channel, hi, hello, welcome. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it here. Uh, I hope the, the mind ramblings haven't distracted you too much, but that's, that's pretty much what you get with me. Um, <clears throat> I've been told that my voice is very soothing and calming, however, so me chuntering on about everything and nothing and wandering off and having whole other conversations with myself before coming back to the topic apparently is bearable with this voice who knew um, it'd be lovely if you'd like to join the 4F family super easy to do <clears throat> you hit that subscribe button then you ring my bell ring my bell choose all notifications and hope YouTube will actually send them and then if you want a little bit of chill out time a little bit of me time as well as this rather ample back side upon which I'm currently perched I have a rather ample back catalogue did you see what I did there? did you, did you see that? Okay. Uh, back catalogue of films that you can indulge in. There are obviously 52 preceding episodes of this particular challenge. Um, there are other collabs that I've done, there are challenge films, tag films, makeup tutorials, product reviews, mini tutorials on things like winged liner and how to shape your brows and uh, I think I've got one with lashes now. I think I've put how to put false lashes on as well. So, yay! Basically, I've said it for what feels like forever. Now, grab a drink, grab a snack, pick a playlist, put your feet up, get comfy, and indulge. Just have a little bit of a chill out session. Right, my lovely ones. As ever. All that remains for me to say is you'll stay fabulous and I will see you next time. Bye for now.